Al Barrison back in the corner of Henry Cejudo. Now, let's break down this timeline. 48 hours ago, UFC puts out a countdown show, and it shows Henry dismissing, firing, breaking up with Captain E. I don't quite know what to call it. it frankly, it was very uncomfortable for me. So let me get a little bit of a timeline down because the, the, the story has been going, it's been bouncing back and forth. Bad Guy Inc. went to the hotel yesterday. It exists right now on my YouTube page if you would like to go and see it. But my partner, Ryan Parsons, shows up. He sees these guys. He's with them for hours and he asks, what really happened here? Because there was a number of stories coming out saying it was an angle, that what you saw on the UFC countdown show was a spoof for attention. So, and I had hoped it was, I, but I didn't think it was. And the only reason I didn't think it was is there was no ask, right? I, I mean, spoofs and viral and these moments have some kind of an ask. They have some kind of a plug. You watch it, you watch it, you're distracted, watch it, you can't look away, and then something comes on the lower third, and it tries to get to you subliminally, something along these lines. There, there was nothing like that in this program. This moment, as awkward as it was, wasn't even used as a way of branding the countdown piece. So I thought, hey, what we're looking at here is really happening, and as awkward as it might be, it's still very authentic. These were my thoughts, but it's hard to always know. Even if you're on the inside, it's hard to always know. So when Ryan was filming this, Captain Eric said no. As a matter of fact, it did happen, and he said, but for time frame, it was two months ago. The very first week of Henry's camp, and I, and I got to do quotation. Henry's always working out. He's always in the gym. But where he really buckled in is when the UFC came out with the cameras, and he said it also happened to be the day that I arrived. So the day that I arrived, I was actually dis... I don't know what word to use. I don't like the word fire, but I think it's appropriate. I'm just going to choose to use the word dismiss. This is actually on the, it was my very first day the cameras are... I actually got dismissed. That was real. He said, now... It was okay because I have Pitbull, who's training in Brazil, and I have Paulo Costa, who, by the way, is on the same card. He says, I'm cornering Paulo. I'm training Paulo. It's hard to be in two places at once. So I just flew up, put all my time in Apollo. But he said that did, in fact, happen. Now, when you guys saw this, which is roughly 48 hours ago, see, that's where the timeline is so relevant that you understand this happened eight, nine weeks ago. When you guys saw it, the backlash was so strong, and it was even from peers. I mean, Volkanovsky weighed in on it, just for example. Darren Till weighed in on it, just for example. Right? These are just things that I saw that got to me on social media. And it bothered people. It made people so uncomfortable that they put out another piece, they being Henry and Captain E. Another piece came out onto social media saying, hey, we're back together. Captain E's back in the corner. But to, to fully appreciate the story is where you have to understand the gap. That's where you have to understand there was eight weeks before it was filmed, right? By example, if you thought that had come out on Sunday, that he, he was rele uh, released of duties on Sunday from the camp, but he was back on Monday because that's the way it got presented to you, the audience. You saw this moment, the firing. One day later, after a backlash, you see a reconciliation. And that's where, if you go over to my YouTube page and you watch this clip, that's where it starts to become so interesting. Hey, wait a minute, camp's already done. Captain E, who's been with Henry from Jump Street, and guys, this goes back to Henry's Olympic days. And I'm not even talking about the Olympic Games. I'm talking about the trials and preparation to get to the Olympics. Back when Henry was a teenager, he had this very guy, Captain Eric Albarison, with him. So you've got a real relationship. Nobody would know Henry quite as well is Captain E. And if you take it for the way it was presented to you, you're fired, you're hired. It's very different that you do understand it accurately, which is the entire camp happened without Captain E. They flew to location, which happens to be Anaheim. The reason Captain E is there is because he's cornering his athlete, Hollo Costa. So the whole reason that he's even there, flew in from Brazil with Team Paulo Costa. Henry sees him at the hotel and re-invites him into the corner, hands him a team uniform, 
Eric accepts. I'll be there. I'll be in your corner. Okay. Does it seem like the story is done to you guys? Because for me, this is where it's starting. They did an entire camp without Captain Eric. That would mean that Captain Eric got replaced. Somebody else got brought in. Never in the history of these camps does somebody go, but that spot doesn't go, hey, there's four of us now. There's four coaches. We're going to cut one. We're going to do three. We're going to run the camp of three coaches. Not only have I never seen that, I've never even heard of that. Whatever role it is that Captain E had, they would bring somebody else in for that role. So if you show up to the hotel, you present a uniform, and you ask a person to be in your corner, who'd you kick out? Do you see the incredible irony? The incredible irony is from a PR perspective to fix what the community didn't feel right about. But in order to fix it, you have to do the very thing. The punishment and the crime go hand in hand. So who was the corner that came to camp? Who was the corner that believed he was going to be cage side this weekend? Who was the corner that had flown to Anaheim thinking they're going to do that? Because when Henry walks up to Captain E, who he had fired, he doesn't know that Captain E is going to say yes. By the way, it puts him in a hard position. Right? Think about Eric. He's in the back. He's in a locker room with Paul Acosta. He has to leave. He has to then return with a whole different injury. I'm just suggesting for you, Henry didn't know for sure the answer was going to be yes. So who was the person that was scheduled to be there? And that's where it starts to get highly uncomfortable. I mean, I got to tell you, like when I'm asking you who is the person, I'm not asking you to investigate that and then come and post their name in the section. I don't want to know. I'm not going to make another piece. I don't want to embarrass that person at all. I'm just sharing for you that it looks like that's where the story begins. And what was worked on in camp? What was the specific game plan? When we got the team to speak about this, which again, you can go to my YouTube page if you, if you want to see the entire thing. But when we got them to speak about it, we didn't ask specifically what was the problem. And when they talked about it, they said, hey, look, we're like brothers. We butt heads, there's fights, but we always can come back together. I, I understand that analogy, and I think that that's true, and those two are very close. I don't dismiss any of that. I think that that's very real. I'm just wondering, when they butt heads, when they were brothers and they're so close and they're working on something together, and there was some disagreement, what was the disagreement? Was it a material fact within the strategy? Was it within the game plan? Is there something that Henry believes he needs to do to defeat Marab, and Eric believes you need to do something else to defeat Marab. And those are the answers that we don't have. Those are the answers we just won't know. What was worked on the camp? What did that camp look like? What's different, right? You bring in somebody else, and don't forget, Captain E isn't just one of the team. He's the guy. He's the guy that oversees everything. He's the one that will bring in the kickboxing coach, the jujitsu instructor, the strength and condition, however it is that you do your camp. Tell you who gets what days and how long you get. You got 30 minutes with him on Wednesday. You got him for two hours on Monday. So if somebody else did that, who is that person? What was it that they suggested? When did they find out they weren't going to be in the corner? And there's a lot on it. And I would never blame Henry for doing the best he can to create an environment where he can find success. This isn't a blame game at all by me. It's just a very interesting conversation of what strategy and style, because Henry and Marab is terribly fascinating in one regard. Henry on paper is easily the best wrestler in that division. Marab, by the numbers, is easily the most effective MMA wrestler in that division. So where was the push and pull? And what is the strategy to win this match.